It's the 2K Sports pregame show brought to you by Kia. Welcome to the NBA on 2K Sports. Ernie Johnson here with my co Tonight we'll see the Washington Wizards playing against the Houston Rockets. And for Houston, they're in the midst of a three-game losing streak hoping to break out with a win tonight. We'll see if they can shake off the cobwebs. And guys, let's talk John Wall, the leader of this team without a doubt. When they struggle, though, does he get too much of the blame, Kenny? No, that comes with the price tag of being a max contract player, the leader of your team, all of those things, the face of the franchise. The best player gets the credit, but he also gets the criticism. I agree with that, but as good as Wall is, there are four other guys on the floor, and they all should share responsibility for a loss, not just the max guy, Kenny. And now we send you to Kevin Harlan as they get ready for the opening tip. We're coming at you from the Verizon Center in beautiful Washington, D.C. as the Wizards prepare to take the court. Hi, everyone. This is Kevin Harlan with Chris Weber and Greg Anthony, our sideline reporter, David Aldridge. Before the action gets going here, let's go to David Aldridge, who spoke with Mike D'Antoni. David, what's the news? Well, guys, he has an admiration for what he called the intelligent, efficient offense played by today's opponent. He told me that the thing about this team is that they are so good at identifying the weak spots in an opponent, and they come at you in multiple ways, depending on where those weak spots are. He said, we've got to be ready for everything. Pretty tall order. Guys? Thanks, David. And the early season, a time of optimism. Every team, Chris, thinking and hoping they'll, they'll make the postseason. Yeah, pretty quickly, though. You'll start to see which teams are separating themselves mm -hmm. and which teams reality sets in for. I mean, for the struggling teams, you don't panic this early in the season. You have to try to get better every day and turn things in your favor by the time April rolls around. Good point. Tip-off goes to Houston. All fueled up and ready to go. Let's check out who's on the floor, courtesy of Gatorade. Taking a look at the Rockets. Ariza and Modi Yunus are your small and power forwards. Then there's Gordon. Then it's Clint Capella. And it's Prigioni in at the one. On Yunus, no luck. And the Wizards with possession. Last game matched up with the Magic. A tough loss there. And I don't care how much you grind it out defensively. When you shoot it that poorly, you're going to struggle to win games. Yeah, but they could have moved the ball better as well. The shot selection was uh, poor offensive execution. All with it. He had a 12-point outing in their last game against Orlando. Uh, don't forget, he also racked up three steals. He showed terrific anticipation and heart on the defensive. Gorgot wide open. He fired. And off the front iron, and in it goes. You can't give him that shot. A few open looks are all it takes to get him in the zone. And that's the last thing the defense wants to happen. You don't need to get him hot out there because the basket just opens up that much more. Here's Bonnie Yunus. Morris with the rebound. Uh, they have to be happy at least with how they set it up. Most of the time, that's a sure make. Wall wide open. Offensive rebound. Pass to Gortat. Nice ball movement by Washington. Launches it. And Wall gets it to go in on the assist by Morris. Wall's got his first three points of the game. Joni kicks to Gordon. Capella dishes to Gordon. He feeds it to Monte Yunus. Brigioni, the pass to Capella. Here's Brigioni. Gortat covering. Five to shoot. Here's Capella. Gets the 14-footer to fall. Capella's got his first points of the game. Come on, when Capella is training the mid-range, Jay, the D has to be nervous. He is really demonstrating signs of improvement. And Wall kicks to Morris. Back to Wall. And again, it's Gortat. Gortat's got his second bucket tonight. And you're going to take as many of those high percentage shots as you can get. There's the dish to Gordon. It's Ariza on the wing. Eyes a three. Morris with the rebound. Wizards leading by three. Now here's.
Here's Wall. Pass to Gorchak. To the middle. Got a piece of it. Porter. So the whistle blows on the shot and two free throws for the contact right there. And the Rockets have a big fan base in Texas and the surrounding area. There's no doubt. But they also, Chris, have one of the biggest fan bases overseas. I mean, well, let's be honest. The reasoning for the huge Chinese following, of course, was Yao Ming. Yao was not only an incredible player, but a huge ambassador for the sport and the Rockets. Amazing that his impact and fandom still can be found with the Rockets, even years after his retirement. It's stolen by Morris. And here we go. Washington fast break. Beals running. Can't hit that one. And Houston the other way now. They're coming into this game off that recent loss to Atlanta. Yeah, not a very inspired performance for them, particularly when they were defending. They just gave that hostile crowd plenty to cheer for. Well, when you're on the road, unless you're absolutely shooting the lights out, defense has to be your ally. The effort just, just wasn't good. Here's Gordon. And two free throws coming up as he misses that one. Drawing the whistle and a lot of contact there. Bradley Beal picks one up. I mean, even from over here, you can see that one pretty clearly. Houston shooting their first shots from the free throw line tonight. And looking at last season's numbers, down below 70% as a team from the line. Just solid. Really one of the very best there is at the free throw line. Washington's gone one or two from long range in the first quarter. And the wide open shot from Morris. Off target from three point range. And here in the first quarter, with a little over three and a half minutes played. Here's Bonnie Eunice. Banked in off the glass. Bonnie Eunice has got his second bucket. Washington trailing. And Wall kicks to Morris. loose oh uh, here we go with gordon nobody back and it's gordon finishing it off and guys got careless with the ball there and the turnover leads to the big stuff once he came up right with the steal he went straight on the attack and how about the explosiveness he shows going from the offensive to the defensive end in a blink to the middle wants to get it to a reason and does here's capella goes up and lays it nice and easy yeah, they're going to have a nice little run here. Wizards trail by five. Outside wall. There's the pass to Beal. To stop the run. Morris dishes to Gorchak. And so he earns a trip to the line. Officials saw the contact and he'll shoot two. He's getting his first free throw attempt of the night right now. And just a shade over 70% from the line a season ago. That's an area I'm sure he wants to improve. That one misses. What you like about Gortat is that, Greg, he doesn't have a lot of limitations in his game. Yeah, and, and with Gortat, his versatility is what makes him valuable. He can face up and hit a J or play with his back to the basket. Has the speed and strength to stay with all types of centers in the league. Down to five on the shot clock. Here's Bonnie Yunus. And they pick up two. Bonnie Yunus has got six. Here is Wall. They've been struggling here on offense. Yeah, a bit of a dry spell for sure. Shoots from the elbow. Rebounded by Capella. Uh, he's really had a rough quarter on the offensive side of the floor. Gordon, the pass to Parigioni. Oniutis in the post. Gortat covering, and he drops in the way up off the glass. He's got eight. And now you see them starting to really work the ball inside. There's a screen by Gorton. Kicks to Porter. Three-pointer. Adiunas grabs the miss. Adiunas has got his third rebound on the night. Well, you, you have to like their work on the boards, Kevin, particularly here to start the game. And it's going to be a three-second call. And let's see the stat sheet here on John Wall. He's coming off an excellent season. Third time and assist. Out, and of course, he's got a nose for the ball. He ranked in the top 10 in steals last season. So timeout called here. The first for Washington. 
And one of the big issues for the Wizards is making sure they stay fiery on the defensive end. When, when this team, Greg, gets in trouble, more often than not, it's because they get sloppy on deep. Yeah, and that can hurt them at times. When they don't bother to challenge shooters or, or miss a rotation, that's when things start to go south. How, how far this team goes depends on how far their defense will take. Excellent vision right there on that assist. Perfect setup. And there's the feed to Capella. Here's Ariza. Gets it to go from beyond the arc. Ariza's got himself on the board with three there. This is as good as it gets for a first quarter in terms of shooting the basketball. And Wall kicks to Beal. Outside, Wall. Kept alive. And they're going to count the bucket and send him to the line. It could be a three-point play. Well, he wasn't blocked out. He stayed with the play. you got to love the effort. The Wizards have been successful on three of their four free throw attempts up to this point. And they shot their free throws at a measly 73% clip over the course of last season. Mahimi's checked in Mind for Washington. Martin comes in for Bradley no Beal. And then for Houston, Nene, he's checked in for Capella. Sam Decker comes in for Trevor Ariza. And it's Brewer in for Gordon. That free throw good from Gortat. Chris, who do you feel are guys that can just own a game? You know, take it over at any time and get it going. Well, I think you have to look at Curry. You, you know, you know he can do that at any time. Clay Thompson, I mean, he set a record for points in the quarter. But yeah. I also think you have to look Damian Lillard and how he can get you buckets and get you going mm -hmm. uh, in, in so many ways. There's so many guys that can be explosive and take a game over for you. Good analysis. Here's Wall. And the shot is long. Now, he, he doesn't look like himself right now. Nothing is going his way. Easily outside. Now, here's Decker. He's guarded close. Here's Nene. And block. That one goes careening off the glass. Marcus Thornton on the wing. Covered by Brewer. Nice ball movement by Washington. Mahimi's shot is good. Yeah, another nice bucket down low. They've really been able to work the ball into the post effectively here so far. To the middle. Got a piece of it. And that one goes out of bounds. Nice touch by Porter. And where the shot's been coming from tonight? Here's a look. Broken down by paint, mid-range, and three-point shot attempt so far for the Wizards. And you can see how important those inside baskets are. This is a team that loves to work the ball inside, whether the entry pass or off of a drive. They like to feed on those high percentage looks. And so here is Houston. Six-point game. Nene dishes to Prigioni. And another three for Houston. Now how on earth did they let him get that wide open? Washington's gone one of five from downtown in the first quarter. Points out there have been hard to come by. Mahimi a screen. Porter passes to Wall. Again, the miss by Wall. Now these are just terrible shots he's attempted right now. No reason whatsoever for this kind of horseplay. Gioni for three. Rebound, Washington. Gortat's got his third rebound tonight. And it's Wall in the corner. Wall missing again. And boy, has he been struggling big time here in the quarter. Well, it hasn't been his best. Just to say the least, he just needs to calm down out there and let the game come to him. You could not diagram a better way to open a quarter. It's really the ideal start that any team wants. Now they have to ride this way throughout the rest of the game. And it's blocked. You know what? He's just stone cold right now. Really not sure if he's their best option offensively as they try to get back in this game. <laughs> Defensively, they've got to pick up the intensity. Hard to win surrendering this high a field goal percentage. Time called here. The Wizards decide to talk it over. In addition to going over the game plan and making whatever necessary adjustments have to be made, Greg, this time out also the time for players to get rehydrated or hydrate for the first time with some Gatorade. Plenty of basketball still to be played here, and they have to get recharged. Uh, that's a great point. Without proper hydration, a player can completely run out of gas down the stretch of a, of a game, and that's something that none of these guys can afford to have happen. If you're going to battle all the way to the finish, you have got to be hydrated. 
These teams were last season's best passers. The squads with the most assists in the NBA. The Wizards' fifth. Well, last year, these guys did a great job of playing unselfishly, trusting each other, moving the ball around. That's why they had so many assists. Shot clock at three. Thornton. Really having a difficult time getting anything to fall. And nothing is falling for him right now. Decker kicks to Nene. Out to the right wing. Here's McDaniels. Off target with his three. And the great shooters know when they've got enough opening to go for the three. I didn't think it was a bad choice on that possession. Uh, he had all the room in the world to get that up, but somehow blew it by rushing it just, just a tad. And Brewer kicks to Decker. That shot off. And it's Washington the other way. This, of course, their first opportunity to play Houston this season. And this was as even a matchup as you'll find in the NBA. Split the season series down the middle, one apiece. And, of course, this is a new season. Both teams have added new wrinkles. We'll see which one has made more progress. Beasley right side. He kicks it to Decker. There's the three. It's rebounded by Thornton. And that one gives them a plus five rebound advantage, Kevin. Keeps it alive. Nice. He snuck a hand in there. That's the great anticipation he brings on the offensive glass. Rockets leading by nine. Inside. It's tipped. He dishes it to Porter from about 19 feet. That's short off the rim. Uh, really surprised he clanked that one. He makes those on the regular. Easily outside. To the middle. Here's Brewer. It's rebounded by Thornton. That was as easy as it gets. He needs to complete those looks. There's 25 seconds left in the first quarter. The offensive rebound. There's a whistle. It's going to go on Corey Brewer. That is his first foul of the game. Here's Thornton. Now Burke. Screen by Smith. Three-pointer. Unable to get that one. And so the first quarter is in the books. Houston on top. They lead by nine. And the second quarter about to get started. We'll be back in just a moment. A chance to hear from Bradley Beal. He came from a football family in St. Louis, but said his mother. She definitely put the ball in my hand. She's the one who. <laughs> Maybe some other NBA players should be practicing with Bradley Beal's mom because she uh, has definitely honed something special into him. To be sure, I'm just not sure some of the more delicate NBA egos could handle her trash talking once she beats them in a game of horse. And welcome back. It's been all one-sided so far through the first quarter as our second quarter gets underway. And guys for the Rockets, what jumps out to you from a number standpoint? It's all about their defense. They have just done a terrific job of negating the timing and spacing of their opponent. Oh, yeah, great communication. The guys are quick and rotating help and, and playing with a lot of energy. This is how the floor looks for the Rockets starting the second. Corey Brewer is out there with McDaniels. Then there's Ryan Anderson. Then there's Harold. And it's Onuwaku in at the three. Smith sets the pick for Thornton. Smith right side. Let's it go from deep. That shot, no good. A slight rebound advantage for them. One more column in their favor, and it's all adding up. It's Anderson with the drive, and there's the foul. It goes on Ryan Anderson. 
That's his first foul. Yeah, really good defensive play to cut him off there and square up. For the Wizards, Morris comes in for Nicholson, and John Wall subbed in for Burke. And a switch here also for Houston. Pablo Brigioni is checked in for Brewer. And Wall kicks to Smith. Here's Thornton. It's rebounded by Houston. And you, you look at the Wizards, they definitely took a step backwards last season. Went, went from being a, a, maybe a dark horse to get to that conference finals uh, to uh, becoming a team that just had to fight to stay in the playoff mix. So it's going to be interesting to see how they bounce back from the adversity of a season ago. Eric Gordon, he's checked in for Houston. Here's Wall. And he was fouled in the Good. act of shooting. Good. Chance here now for a three-point play. What's up? Where's the box out? Some easy second-chance opportunities there. That's just the real lack of physicality in the post there. No reason at all that they should have gotten the rebound off that miss. And for the Wizards, there were a lot of factors as to why they had a rough season. Lost some key players and, and dealt with injuries like all teams. You know, and, and even with all of those challenges, I don't know that this team is quite as talented as everyone thinks they are. I mean, they do have a good core with which to build around. But you have to temper expectations with this team moving forward. Chris, throughout your career, you spent a lot of time down low on the blocks, and we're seeing less of that now, the, those post-ups that were such a primary option when you played in teams' offenses. Does, does that concern you? Is that good or bad? It's concerning from this point. Um, kids aren't being properly coached uh, in, in the middle school and the high school level. Kids don't know how to play on the post. Uh, when you look back through the history of this game, whether it's been guards or big fellas, the post is not about how tall you are. The post is about how the closer you are to the basket, you usually have an advantage. And if you have game, then that pump fit game down there will work and get you to the foul line. And if you are a good passer, then it draws the double team. It changes the angle that the defense has to look inside and play. It helps slow the pace down sometimes uh, in uh, in, in the playoffs uh, when the game gets uh, tough and a little bit more physical and we can say that everybody's changed their game but only one team wins a year so you know it, I don't know if the trend is necessarily not there with big guys not in the post when I look at guys like Drummond, uh, Blake Griffin, Dwight Howard, Horford, Jordan, Zebo, the Gasol brothers. Um, it, there's still a lot of post players out there so uh, I, I don't subscribe to that opinion that uh, is less on the post. I just uh, subscribe to the opinion that maybe coaches uh, don't want to coach that way because uh, guys have post game. We just have to see uh, if the game will change. But small ball right now is what everybody loves. Great perspective. And they've repeatedly probed inside in the first half, guys, and, and it's paid off. And it's Beal in the corner. Morris outside feeds it to Thornton. Looking for Wall. He gets it there. Wall with another miss. I I'd love to see them impose themselves a little more on the backboard. That's a great way to find confidence. Always a surefire way to get back in the game. And it's Gordon missing. Wizards trail by eight. Floats one up, and Wall lays it in. Wall's got ten points. He continues to build on his outstanding play during the first quarter. Houston's got nothing but zeros from long range in the second quarter. Oh of four to the inside. Here's Harold, and Harold slams it in. And, and nobody, guys, among the defenders stepping up to challenge him on that drive to the 10. And Greg, he says, thank you very much, and <laughs> sails in for the flush. But it's surprising, Kev, to see so little urgency on the defensive side, especially with them losing this game right now. And the foul called on Jason Smith. That is his first foul of the game. Miami's checked in for the Wizards. And a switch here also for Houston. Trevor Ariza's checked in for Ryan Anderson. Here's Brigioni. His last outing, he had eight points. Out to the right wing. Harold, the pass to Onoaku. Another miss by Houston. Washington trail. A three from Morris. But they recover it. And here is Thornton. Outside, Wall. Nice ball movement by Washington. 
down low. Here's Mahimi. A shot, no good. The Rockets go the other way with it. 13 points was their biggest lead in the game. Out to the right wing. Onoaku, the pass to Harrell. Cloak loose. Wizard shooting 28%. A rocky, rocky performance for them offensively. Wasted no time on that one. Beal's got himself going with the triple, his first basket of the game. Gordon kicks to a reason. Back to Gordon. And it's Marcus Thornton with the foul. And the Rockets making a change here. Here's Brigioni covered by Wall. Leaves it issues to Capella. Terrific assist. A nice finish. Solid play all around. And Capella is very efficient down deep, using his muscle to get off the shots he wants inside. And Thornton kicks to Wall. From 13, Beasley with the rebound. Beasley's got rebound number five here tonight. Gordon for three. Rebound by John Wall. Wizards trail by seven. On its way from Thornton for two. And that comes off the assist by John Wall. Wall's got his third assist on the night. And now the first timeout called here for the Rockets. Well, the numbers say it, Chris. NBA players have, on average, gotten bigger and bigger over the years. The game requires more movement. There's more movement on the offensive end, certainly, with teams now instituting different styles. Do you think that creates an issue of wear and tear, especially on the bigger players? And if that is the case, how should the league address that? No, I just think wear and tear is specific to the individual, uh, to the style of play of the individual, uh, to the certain play of the individual. You know, it's it's not, I, I don't think you can just make a blanket statement and say it's too many games for everyone to play. Uh, everyone is different. Everyone handles injury different. I, I think what we need to concentrate more on than the glass being half empty is the fact of what can we do better in the area of rest and recovery? What can medicine, what can science, uh, what uh, tools are out there that guys can rest and recover? Because the fact of the matter is uh, when it's over, it's over. And you're a young guy, you're playing, you have the energy. Uh, you know, I can't remember a playoff game ever being so tired that I couldn't play from wear and tear because these were the moments that we waited for. So uh, this is the NBA. This is the toughest sport in the world. And uh, part of that is the grind of the 82-game schedule. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, I, I really don't see anything wrong with that. That was a great answer. The Rockets again can't hit. After nailing the outside jumper during the first quarter, he can't seem to build off of it in the second. This is it to Gortat. Outside, Beal. And the rebound goes to the Rockets. Beasley's got six rebounds now in the game. Here's Capella. Ariza has the open look. No good on the three. Wizards trail by five. And Wall kicks to Thornton on the wing. That shot off. And you know what? He's just not on his game. No doubt about it. Their deficit isn't totally on him, but he has not been an asset for his team. And it's Beasley finishing it off. And how about breaking out the Statue of Liberty on that dunk? <laughs> a nice way to pad that lead a little more. You're right. Outside, Wall. Thornton passes to Gortat. It's Beal on the wing. It's stolen by Ariza. The shot is good. It's his second bucket in five tries. That's their third straight make off an assist. At the elbow, Gortat. It's rebounded by Houston. 13 points was their biggest lead in the game. When you watch Clint Capella play, you notice how smooth he moves for a center of his size. He gets off the floor easily to contest shots or grab boards. He can cover a lot of space in a short amount of time when acting as the help defender. Now, his shot hasn't been going in, and they will probably have to look for someone else to step up and provide. Beasley kicks to Gordon. To the middle, and it's going to be a three-second three. call. A 
we have the time, let's take a look at last season's best transition team. The Wizards second, and third, the Rockets. It's all about the fast break with these two groups. I mean, they were terrific a season ago, playing at a breakneck pace. Looking at who's out there now for the Wizards. Nicholson's checked in for Gortat. Porter comes in for Beal. And Trey Burke subbed in for Marcus Thornton. And with Capella in his movement, you also like what it does for him in transition. Well, don't forget, Capella has that deceptive limp, too. You don't think he can take off from that far out and get a shot. But all of a sudden, boom, he's dunking right there on your dome or throwing your shot out to the third row for a souvenir for some kid to take home. Wall dishes to Mahini. We take a second here to take a look at the shot chart. For well, I think a big issue for him right now is his performance from the mid-range. Just nothing seems easy for him at the moment, and it's resulted in a lot of missed opportunities for himself and his team when he's taken that shot. Two shots. That free throw, no good. And the second free throw, good. Pockets leading by eight. McDaniels passes to Decker. To the paint. Oh! And he just dangles from the bucket <laughs> after sending that one through. And you can see which team has the swagger right now. That Kia slam cam replay really gave you a good look at the action. Nicholson kicks to Mahimi. It's in. That's his third field goal of the game. He's three for five. Works for looking close. That's just an excellent effort. Over in the corner, Decker. And some nice passing there by Houston. From past the arc, buries it from three-point range. Decker's got himself going with the triple, his first basket of the game. Wizards trail by 11. And Wall kicks to Nicholson. Outside, Wall. The teardrop falls in. Wall's got 12 in the game. Oh, he's been basically perfect so far in this quarter, especially on offense. Fires from deep. And Monty has the basket on the assist by Brewer. And the Rockets lead by 12. How many times have we seen a possession like that from them today? Ending with a basket coming off a pretty pass. Down low, here's Burke. Foul call that time on the way up. That'll give him two chances at the free throw line here. It's his first trip to the line. At about an 82% clip a season ago, so I'm sure he'll take those numbers. And the Wizards making a change here. Smith has checked in. Burke hits them both. We've got 113 left in the second quarter. And Brewer kicks to Decker. McDaniels dishes to Nene. Doesn't go for him. Now the Wizards take it the other way. Pass to Burke. Right side wall. And it's wide right. Hits off the rim. Rockets leading by 10. Over in the corner, Decker. The three. Nicholson grabs the board. Washington's gone one of six from three-point land in the second quarter. Less than 20%, but they've continued to let him fly. The Rockets shooting it up around 45% from the field in the second quarter. They get it back. Nene and the rejection by Smith. Burke with it. Now defended by Decker. It's Porter outside, hands it from downtown. Porter's got it back down to a single-digit deficit for Washington. Dishes it to Nene. He feeds it to Monte Yunus. Pass to McDaniels. Here's Decker. He got it up that time, but it wouldn't fall for him. And so that brings the first half to a close. Rockets lead by seven. It's time now to go courtside as we send you over to David Aldridge from the sideline. David, take it away. Thanks very much, Bradley. The old saying, no rebounds, no rings. How important is it to continue to have five guys go to the glass in the second half? Yeah, all 
five, all five guys. But I think we're too worried about getting out in transition. So uh, I think one through five, including the guards, you know, we all got to get in there and rebound. The 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hello again, everybody. Ernie Johnson, joined by Kenny Smith, right there. And Shaquille O'Neal, he's right there. Houston holding the upper hand after the first two quarters. They've got the seven-point lead. Your opinion, Shaq. Well, Kenny should appreciate this. I love the ball movement. They were in sync as a unit, and their assist numbers were impressive. Anytime you get five players working together like that instead of one guy doing it alone, it's always going to be a boost. That's the primary reason they're in control of the game. Kenny, what's your take on Washington so far? They need to break it down. And I look at the individual areas that they're struggling, like they're getting pounded. I mean pounded, Ernie, on the boards. That's a hustle stat. It is just about time now for the third quarter to begin. After the final buzzer sound. The dome of the U.S. Capitol building looking absolutely grand as we make our return to Washington, D.C. The second half just about to get going here. Wizards trail by seven. Morris pairs with Gortat down low. Beal and Porter are out on the wings. And it's Wall in at the one spot. That's the room for Scott Brooks getting going here in the second half. And, the, and they're controlling the boards, Kevin. That's plus five in that category. Capella, the best to Monte Yunus. Gortat with the block. And even three on three break. It's Porter outside. It's rebounded by Houston. Ariza's got his third rebound tonight. Regione dishes to Monte Yunus. Yeah, easy call. The Rockets shooting their fifth and sixth free throws of the game. He's off on the first. So neither attempt will fall that time for him. Here's Washington now. The Celtics will be coming into town for the next game. They'll find themselves in the middle of this string of three straight at home. And he gets contact and the whistle on the shot. Two shots coming up. Yeah, good job to take it right at the D. For Washington, they have shot 8 of 10 from the line. That's an even 80% free throw shooting here. No good on that one. At the line number two. Good on the second free throw. Rockets leading by six. Regione kicks to Gordon. In the corner, Moni Yunus with it. And it's going to be two free throws. Drew contact on the shot. And a chance here to see the numbers for Trevor Ariza. Last season's performance for him. Last season put up about 12 points per game. Four rebounds and two assists. And, and some pretty good numbers, guys. He's certainly making a contribution. About one minute played here in the second half. Wall passes to Morris. The dish to Gortat. It's rebounded by Houston. Capella's got four rebounds in this game. That's a big donut, folks, here. Start the second half. Four straight they've missed. Here's Bonnie Yunus. Off the mark there with the three-point shot. And you could tell he thought that triple was going to fall. Now, by this point, we all know the approach the Houston Rockets front office has taken to assemble the team. It's made for some great years for Houston, but they have yet to turn the corner. And Morris drops them both. Over a minute and a half into the third quarter of action. Ariza with it. Now guarded by Porter. Moniunas gets to Ariza. Regione dishes to Capella. Houston moving the ball around. On the wing, Gordon. From deep. Morris with the rebound. They haven't started this half off on the right foot. That's three straight shots they've misfired. Ariza with the rebound. Rockets leading by five. Gordon, the pass to Capella, kicks it to Monte Yunus. 
The feed to Capella. Ronnie Eunice dishes to Capella, and it's Otto Porter with the foul. That's his first foul. And so it's Houston with it. Since the second half started, they've only given up three points. Here's Monte Yunus, and goaltending is going to be the call. So they get the basket there anyway. I mean, he's just been huge today for his team. Without his hot shooting, there's no way they'd have the lead. Wizards trail by seven. Morris outside. Now the pass to Beal. Outside, Wall. It's rebounded by Houston. It's not winning basketball when you're attempting shots like that. Oh, no, you're right. It's selfish on his part to attempt that. Should have passed it back out and tried to get a better look. Clock keeps going. Three minutes into the second half now. Timeout, They've timeout. been struggling here on offense. Yeah, a bit of a dry spell for sure. Right. Time called here. The Wizards decide to talk it over. Yeah, enough scoring on the inside there. I think it's time for him to send a message to his team. Oh, well, they have to become more physical defensively and really commit to protecting that painted area. Houston making a switch here. Anderson's checked in. Here's Beal. Morris a screen. And Beal kicks the wall. Inside. Deflects the pass. Here's Porter. The shot from the low post is good. Porter's got seven. That's an aggressive approach to the rack, but still he calmly floated the game. Prigioni, the pass to Anderson. Shoots. Gortat comes up with the rebound. Gortat's got his eighth rebound here tonight. Feeds to Beal. Just over three and a half minutes through the third quarter of play now. Here's Wall, and he finishes nicely on the way. 14 points for him. They didn't have much of a problem getting the ball into the post that time. Here's Ariza, and it's slammed in by Ariza. Oh, you got to respect the fearlessness of Ariza. Slamming it through and stop. So it's the Wizards now. All with it. 14 points for him. Passes it to Beal. Offensive rebound. Pockets leading by eight. Gordon dishes to Anderson. And plenty of contact on the shot. So two free throws coming up. And Washington called for the foul. First trip to the line for him here. And he makes the first. Perhaps the most memorable team, Chris, you played on. The Kings of the early 2000s. We see a lot of teams now that have that same up-tempo style with great passing. Is this the way basketball is meant to be played? You know, I think so. I think, uh, you know, you have five players on the court, and, other, and unlike other sports, uh, you have to play offense and defense on this team. And so to keep guys motivated, to keep guys engaged, you know, you want guys that want to touch the ball and score. There could be guys that there can be just decoys out there, but they're still touching the ball, being part of the offense. And it's no worse feeling than to come down for two, three, four, five, six possessions and not touch the ball. Uh, and as a fan, for me, it's nothing worse than watching a team come down two, three, four, five, six possessions and the guy try to go one-on-one, -on -one and he really can't score. And you're looking at the coach like, get this guy off the floor. So team basketball is great. Why? Because uh, you get more open looks, uh, better shot selection. You get different guys in different positions. And, and I think most importantly, you don't think about this, you get more highlights because it put, makes the defense move uh, from side to side. It makes yes. the defense more engaged and pay attention. And, and therefore, when they slip up, uh, it's that much more special uh, with the play. And you can only do that mostly with five players that move the ball. So, yeah, team ball is definitely the best player but even on the best teams you need a guy that can go get you some buckets like that you know what didn't find a very good shot on that possession but still able to get two points and, and one of the things I love about Bradley Beal is, is he is a consistent shooter of the deep ball I mean always seems to hover around that 40 percent mark from beyond the arc and ever since he's come into the league that has been the case and he's also improving in the other areas in terms of his ability to attack and get to the rim and playmaking. The only question for me is can he find a level of consistency in terms of his health that's been the only detriment to his game. The Wizards passing it around. From deep wall. But they recover it. 
They are really crashing the offensive glass, and it's paying off. And Morris throws it down. And if that doesn't get them fired up, guys, nothing will. Greg, just what the doctor ordered on some high-flying annex to narrow the deficit. Well, also a miscommunication on defense. No one rotates over. See ya. And with Beal, he's been as consistent as they get since entering the NBA. Always shoots at a decent clip from wherever he is on the floor. And, and consistency is an aspect of a player that is often overlooked in the grand scheme of things. You know exactly what a player like Beal is going to give you every night for every season. Wizards making a switch here. Burks has checked in. Brewer has checked in for the Rockets. KJ McDaniels comes in for Pablo Prigioni. He hit a three in the first half. Now he's searching for his first outside shot in the second half. And Brewer kicks to Anderson. To the inside. And so he draws the foul on the shot. A trip to the line to shoot two. You know, I love how he absorbs the foul and still had a chance to knock that one down. That's good from Harold. And they're having a lot of trouble at the line today. And unfortunately, it's the kind of day we've seen this team have a lot. Smith checked in for the Wizards. Here's Burke. Ties their comeback bid. Had better get started. I don't know, guys. It's going to take a pretty big run to get back in this one. And just dropping the ball down the side. A timely assist. Rockets have gone three of eight so far in the third quarter, looking to lock in that rhythm. Brewer. He can't get that one. And the Wizards now going the other way. Smith outside. Back to Burke. He kicks it to Smith. He dishes it to Burke. Shot clock at six. Beal can't get that one to fall. Houston leading by nine. Brewer the pass to Anderson. Brewer dishes to Harrell. Let's the three fly. Gets the three-pointer to fall. Brewer's got seven points in the game. Uh, you have to at least get a hand up, right? In Brewer's face from outside, he has such a quick pull-up on that perimeter, Jimmy. Outside, Beal. The tray. Beal can't get that one to fall. And he has been ice cold from beyond the arc here since halftime, and he continues yet to fire away. He has got to tone it down if he wants to help his team. And here we go. Washington fast break. Smith with the ball. And the rebound goes to the Rockets. Anderson's got three rebounds now in this one. And Brewer kicks to Harrell. Pass to McDaniels. And it's Beasley in the corner. Come on, let's go. It's stolen by Mahimi. They need a good offensive possession. Yeah, they've gone a long time without a bucket. Beal, the pass to Porter. It's good, and he threw contact on the shot, so he will go to the line. A three-point play chance here. Nicholson's checked in for Ian Mahimi. Now, it's not exactly hard to see what the Rockets prefer to do on offense. They see the value of the three-pointer and put up a ton of shots from behind the arc. It's been years running that they've finished in the top three and three-pointers attempted at the end of the season. And here's the fast break. Porter leading the way. A quick shot there, and it's off target. Rockets leading by nine. This is to Decker to the left side wing. Onoaku, the pass to Nene. And the shot counts. He's fouled, and it's a chance for a three-point play. And the interior D is really starting to be exposed here. How many layups have they gotten today? Oh, you, you're asking me? The defense has been garbaggio. I've lost track. The D has been non-existent, and they've taken full advantage of it. Here's Burke. And again, Washington, no good. Rockets have gone just a bit under 50% from the field since halftime. Five out of 11. Nene outside to the wing right side. Here's McDaniels. Burke covering. Pass to Onoaku. Houston needs to get a shot off. A nice shot by McDaniels. McDaniels got the lead up to 13 now for the Rockets. 
Textbook, nice pass, great catch, even better finish. It's Beal on the wing, covered by Brewer. Trying to break. Oh. And if that doesn't get them fired up, guys, nothing will. Greg, just what the doctor ordered, huh? Some high-flying annex to narrow the deficit. Well, also a miscommunication on defense. No one rotates over. See ya. And the highlight reel replay brought to you by Kia. Good stuff on that Kia slam cam. And the rejection by Smith. And it's Beal in the corner. That doesn't go either for Beal. All the time in the world to get that one off. Decker, and that one drops. Decker's got his second basket of the night. And good passing, setting up a lot of these buckets right now, Kevin. That's been the key. To the middle. And he was fouled on the way up. Two free throws now for him. We see a chart here for the shooting performance so far. Well, this is what you wanted to see from him. I mean, he's not settling for anything and is going right at the defender, taking the ball to the rim whenever he can. And the attitude he's had on offense is keeping his team flying around as his energy is contagious out there right now. The first one falls. Monty Yunus has checked in for Houston. And he makes both free throws. 136 left in the third quarter. McDaniels dishes to Decker. In the corner, it's Brewer. Off target from three-point range. Wizards trail by 11. Porter kicks to Burke. Takes a three. He can't get that one to fall. Houston's gone a less than productive two of six from three-point land in the second half. The dish to Decker. Some nice passing there by Houston. Now, here is Smith. Inside. Wants to get it to Nicholson and does. Beal gets a wide open look. And the lead is down inside single digits. Beal's got 10 points. He's not the most consistent threat from long range, Kevin, but the defense still needs to play him honest, rotate over and contest. Cody Eunice has the open look, and so he draws the foul on the shot, a trip to the line to shoot two. That free throw missing. That one is no good. Clock management. This is where they can get a two for one. And Kevin, every opportunity counts. Nicholson passes to Burke. He feeds it to Beal. Busts the J after the KG pass thing. Beal's got nine points here in the second half. Houston leading by six. Kicks it to Brewer. There's the feed to Monte Yunus. A three. Houston gets it back. Back to Brewer. And there's the pass to Monte Yunus. He kicks it to Nene. A second chance effort. Soft touch off the glass. Nene's got four points now in the quarter. Nice job getting inside for the layup. Got the deep thinking jump shot. Gave a little pump fake. And then off to the races. And out of bounds as the Rockets gain possession. <laughs> McDaniels. That misses. Would have counted had it gone in. The third quarter comes to a close. The Rockets on top. They lead by eight. And we're coming right back after this break to get the fourth quarter underway. back as we get set to start the fourth. Houston leading by eight. Taking a look at the Rockets. Cody Eunice is down low with Capella. McDaniels is out there with Corey Brewer. And it's Decker in at the three-set. On Eunice, no luck. 
The Wizards are shooting a low 30% mark from the field. Back to Morris. Fires for three. Here's Gorchak. Adi Yunus grabs the miss. Adi Yunus has got his fifth rebound in this one. McDaniels kicks to Monte Yunus. Feeds to McDaniels. Monte Yunus in the post. Gortat's there. Lock at six. Monte Yunus's shot is good. Absolutely. Positively. No D there. If they're going to guard them like that, this is going to be a long game. For them. There's a screen by Gortat. Morris outside for three. They get a bet. It'll go. The Rocket lead is cut down now to just eight points with the basket from Gortat. And for Houston, they're shooting here about 46% for the game. Over to the wing. Decker dishes to Capella. I mean, and Capella really using his massive shoulders to draw contact. Not afraid to go right up into the grill of the defender. Mahaney's jumped in for Washington. That free throw missing. Houston with a big group substitution here. Ryan Anderson, he's checked in for Monte Yunus. Risa comes in for Sam Deck. Gordon's checked in for Brewer. And it's Pablo Prigioni in for McDaniel. The Wizards have gone 1 of 4 since the end of the third quarter. Quarter passes to Whoa! Oh, forget about going for the long range bomb to cut into that lead. Just take it to the hoop, my friend. And how brilliant throwdown. Risa. The Rockets with another miss. Wizards trail by seven. Now Porter. Here is Mahini. And here's Wall outside. Wall missing again. And we're about two minutes into the fourth quarter now. Ariza kicks to Gordon. And that's a foul called on Bradley Beal. That's his third foul of the game. On defense, the Wizards. They've played a great fourth quarter defensively, fouling only three points. Six on the shot clock. Capella dishes to Anderson. Gioni for three. Buries the long range jumper. And the Rockets lead by 10. Gotta be demoralizing. They desperately needed a stop, and instead, they give up a triple on an open look. Where was the defense then? If you're trying to come back in this game, you can't forget to guard the perimeter. Houston's gone one of three from outside the arc since we've reached the fourth quarter. Anderson against Gorchak. And here is Capella. It's good. And now it's a 12-point Houston lead. Yeah, I love the communication and the chemistry between those teammates. And Beal kicks the wall. Anderson against Gorchak. And there's the foul. It goes on Ryan Anderson. That's foul number two for him. Stolen by Anderson. It had been a while since his last turnover. He has played very solid ball up until that point. Gordon kicks to Prigioni. Left side, Anderson. Passes to Capella. Oh, yes, he did. Five up and five down for him so far. I like it. Aggressive. They're pounding it inside. Unwilling to settle for less. Side wall to stop the run. It's rebounded by Houston. Capella's got rebound number five here tonight. It's a plus five advantage for them in rebounding after that one. Houston moving it around. Gioni for three. And another three for Houston. Three. Oh, great ball movement there. Wizards trail by 17. All with it. Let's it go from 11. 
That one off the back iron and out. Really tough for this group right now, trying anything to stop the run. Oh, well, this is the hard part. Once you give up momentum, very difficult to get it back. Oh, no, he may have gotten injured right there. He's in a lot of pain. Oh, man, you just hate to see something like that. Oh, injuries, trust me, an unfortunate part of the game. You know he's got to be frustrated. Sadoransky's checked in for John Wall. Gordon against Beal. Reza passes to Capella. And the dunk by Capella. And the lead's not getting any smaller. Just an incredibly well-rounded performance here on the road. And we all know that winning away from home is never easy. But these guys are putting on a clinic on how to do it today. And Zanaransky kicks to Porter. From 13, Ariza with the rebound. Rockets leading by 19 points. Brigioni dishes to Anderson. Brigioni, the pass to Capella. Kicks it out to Ariza. And again, it's the Rockets from deep. What a final quarter these guys are having from downtown, just burying the threes in bunches. I mean, and they can knock them down, but this is all because of good ball movement. They are getting wide open shots due to how they are zipping the ball around the court. The D, they just can't keep up. Teamwork at its finest. Love the extra pass. Gordon kicks to a reason. Regione dishes to Capella. Pass to a reason. In the corner, it's Gordon. Not really his range, and it's off target. Wizards trail by 20. And Beal kicks to Sederansk. Back to Beal. He dishes it to Gortat. Here's Mahimi. Drops it in from 11 feet. There's Brigioni. Now here's Gordon. Dishes it to Prigioni to the paint. Gorton against Anderson. It's stolen by Mahimi. In transition, here come the Wizards. Beal can't get it to go. Houston leading by 18. Prigioni, the pass to Capella. Free throw line jump shot. Anderson can't get it to go. That is some tough defense there against one of the better finishers in our game. And Beal kicks to Gortat inside. Mahimi, it's rebounded by Houston. 22 is their biggest lead. Outside Gordon. And a foul on the shot. He'll go to the strike for two. And during Ariza's career, he has established himself as an effective role player and fantastic outside shooter and a tenacious defender. That free throw, no good. Andrew Nicholson, he's checked in for the Wizards. Trey Burke comes in for Sederansk, and he's good on the second. Here's Burke. Here's Nicholson. Porter kicks to Burke. Pass to Mahimi. Rebounded by Capella. Capella's got rebound number nine now. What an effort here tonight. Okay, time now for an injury report. We get a chance to check up on John Wall's status. David? Hey, Kevin, I spoke with the head athletic trainer for Washington. They checked out his foot, and it appears he may have sprained his toe on that play. That is such a tough blow to take at the early stage of this season. Hopefully, with it being early, he can recover and help this team down the road. Kevin? Okay, Dave, thanks. Sounds like uh, he won't be out for too long. The edge on the glass is the difference. It's allowed them to build this lead. Here's Anderson. And so he earns a trip to the line. Officials saw the contact, and he'll shoot two. And we see the growth of the three-point shooting big man, the stretch four, if you will. Ryan Anderson was at the forefront, it seems, of that movement. Yeah, especially at his volume of threes. He's never been just a secondary floor spacer. He's a go-to scoring threat with his outside shooting. 
Chris, in your playing days, you suited up for both the East and the Western Conferences. Traditionally, we've seen the Western Conference be the stronger of the two in the last couple decades. But do you feel that has a chance to change, or are we in the midst of that changing now? No, we are. Uh, <laughs> nothing's changed. But I tell you what, LeBron being on that East Coast for so long has really, really helped in that regard. Yes, great point. Down low. And it's out of bounds. Last touch by Ariza. And that's just carelessness there. I mean, you have got to have your head in the game. And the Wizards making a change here. Gortat's checked in. They could use a big shot here to get this offense going. Too many empty possessions. Right now, they need a basket. Nicholson dishes to Beal. Puts up a three. And the rebound goes to the Rockets. Uh, I'm sure the D has no issue whatsoever with him taking those threes, but he isn't hitting anything from out there. Reza passes to Capella. And he finishes nicely on the layup. And he's starting to show that killer instinct this quarter, looking to extend the lead. Now here's Burke. He's tightly guarded. To the inside. Gortat kicks to Beal. That shot missing. They've shown some strength in the paint today. Their work on the boards has been impressive. The dish to Gordon. I think everyone would agree, Chris. You are one of the best passing big men in the history of the NBA. Why is it that passing from post players isn't a skill that is developed more at, at all levels of basketball? Well, one thing, it seems like we have less post players, but yeah. uh, you know what? I, I'm not sure. I think maybe it's been an emphasis on scoring. I, I don't know. All I can speak about is me, Kevin, and I grew up watching, you know, Magic Johnson, who, who at that time was a freakish player because he was 6'9", playing the point guard. You know, think about how the game has evolved. And so yes. for myself, I wanted to take that passing skills of him, Connie Hawkins, uh, other guys that I saw him. hold the ball with one hand and palm it in the post, guys that I knew can dominate in the post. And I kept thinking, you know, why? I waste the possession if I'm going to beast down here in this post if I get double team you know I don't want to just pass it out for a waste of possession why don't I make something happen with it so maybe it could be the mentality as well well said the Wizards shooting only 27 percent from the field looking pretty ugly out there Thornton no good Houston's gotten three of their six three-pointers to fall here in the fourth out left of the wing launches a three Decker can't hit Decker's gone one of five from deep to end the drought. That's good from Berg on the assist by Smith. And I don't care how far from the bucket he is. You've got to have a man on him. He's just too good from deep. Capella with it, working on Smith. Decker can't hit. We see him make shots from the perimeter all the time. Unfortunately, he's just off with his rhythm in this one. And it's Thornton again missing. And for Houston, they're shooting it pretty well, close to 50%. Well, guys, this was never really a contest. Just a total obliteration, if you will. And you can safely say mission accomplished now for the Rockets. This was a team performing to its uh, fullest capability. Uh, a, a hugely satisfying win. A, a, a game that not many will soon forget. And on the other side, one that I think most will try to forget. And during the long NBA season, each contest important here tonight, tonight's win will give them four on the season. And with the win approaching, they'll take the first game here of two that they'll play against this team. Nice to get that first one out of the way and set the tone. And what a huge standout performance it was for Capella. He did all the dirty work that they needed, clearing out space underneath and securing rebounds. Nene, he's checked in for Capella. Chris, you and I were just talking about DeAndre Jordan and all that that happened to him a couple years ago at Dallas. He agreed to go to the Mavs and changed his mind. The league ended up shortening the free agency moratorium from 10 days to five. Uh, do you like that change? You know what? Um, 
It depends on who you are in this situation. You know, having been a free agent before, I know uh, that you need a little bit of time to think. Uh, you might want to get away, and, and, and also, you know, you have to go visit cities. So can you, you know, visit two or three cities and make your decision in those five days? But then again, it gives you a good deadline to have to do it. So for me, this is not something, uh, you know, we have teams that break contracts all the time, or we have teams that let guys go all the time. I didn't feel that sorry for Dallas in this situation. Uh, so with me, for me, uh, I, I just felt that uh, the league modified it and good for everyone. Uh, let's go and uh, get the game started. Great points. The Wizards with another miss. And the Rockets with possession here. Decker dishes to McDaniels. Out to the wing. Decker passes to McDaniels. Houston moving it around. Over to the left wing. Six to shoot. Here's an Owaku. Off target from outside. And the Wizards with possession. Eddie kicks to Nicholson. Here's Burke. Misses the three. Now Decker from deep three-point range. Off target with that shot. So we see the Rockets taking the win here. A resounding victory for them. And Greg in enemy territory, no less. And that's exactly right. But with the way they controlled the game and, and just completely took the crowd out of it, that's how to get it done on the road. And that's going to do it tonight, folks, for our broadcast. For Greg Anthony, Chris Weber, and David Aldridge, this is Kevin Harlan thanking you for watching the NBA, presented by 2K Sports. Now we'll go to the studio with the award-winning Ernie Johnson. The 2K Sports Post Game Show. Kevin, thank you so much. And with this game in the books, what you have to like in that final period, he rose to the challenge, put the team on his back, and was more than willing to carry him across the finish line. As efficient and offensive performers as you're ever going to see, and I mean ever, I don't care where your shots come from. You're not supposed to shoot that high of a percentage. Did he miss? I don't think he missed. He was a wrecking ball underneath. His size, his toughness, his strength, Clearly the most physical guy on the floor tonight, but also he had a sweet touch around the basket. And that is a wrap, everybody. Thanks for joining us this evening. For Shaquille O'Neal, Kenny the Jet Smith, Kevin Harlan, the entire 2K Sports crew, this is Ernie Johnson. See you again soon.